In the cool of the evenings and mornings, most desert creatures are active. When we think of the desert, the words cute and cuddly don't typically come to mind. It is a harsh environment in which thorns, scales, and bones are prevalent sights, and delicate views can be scarce. But don't be deterred by surface impressions. There are creatures of the desert that just might steal your heart. It's a baby cottontail. Hi, I'm Miguel Caldera, and today I've found one of the cutest little creatures you'll ever come across out in the desert. The desert cottontail. Isn't he a precious little guy? Look at him. Just nibbling away at the grasses. How are you, little guy? He's maybe... Maybe three weeks old at most. That's usually about the time where they leave their, their nesting site. Ouch. Ouch. Now, wait, don't go anywhere. We got, we got something to talk about. Here, let me just pick you up. There you are. There you are. Whoa, hey. Hey, don't run away. All right. Whoa. All right, these little guys live in desert-like grasslands and shrublands and riparian areas. Whoa, he's not trying to cooperate right now. Uh, they like to eat mainly grasses. 90% of their diet is made up of grass, and he just does not want to be filmed. I gave the little guy some time to adjust to the idea that I was not a predator, but rather one interested in his well-being. He continued to clean his fur before being distracted by the irresistible urge to nibble. So these guys, ouch, are going to have a diet mostly of grasses. They'll eat cacti, they'll eat forbs, and various other uh, plant matter. The, uh, the thing these guys have to look out for are coyotes, badgers, hawks, ravens, owls, even squirrels will predate on these things. So their number one um, defense is to simply stay still. If they're still enough, the predator might not see them. In that case, would be me, but I saw him. And so their second option for... Uh, reaction is to run and boy can these little guys run they can run up to 20 miles per hour and they run in a zigzag pattern so you can't really just get a straight uh run on them as they'll be turning in a different direction one of the other cool things about it is that the mother will actually pluck fur off of her belly and make the nest come here little guy ah oh, you're gonna make me chase you again aren't you if there's one thing rabbits could do to rival breeding, it's running. Now, as cute as these little guys are, they do have a 
somewhat gross habit. You see, they eat grasses like these. Whoa. And the grasses don't digest very easily, so when they pass it, when they poo, a lot of the grass comes out in their poop. And these little uh, rodents will eat their poo. They'll redigest that grass matter, but they'll only eat their first passing as to try to re, um, re, I don't know, reaccommodate, regroup the plant matter that they've lost through that first pass of digestion. Kind of gross, but it is reality. Little cute thing nonetheless. You see these big old ears? Helps them to hear the predators from a distance. It also helps keep them cool in the hot temperatures. They got veins running through there, which cools the blood. When a cool breeze comes by, they're gonna be quite cool. Baby rabbits, called kits, are born blind and naked and need a constant supply of food in order to grow properly. In just a couple of weeks, they begin to eat grass and rely less on mother's milk, who will only return to the burrow under cover of night to nurse them. Camouflage is crucial to survival, and their provided fur blends them excellently into their surroundings. Only movement betrays their stealth. Like all rodents, the four incisors of a rabbit never stop growing. Chewing on tough grasses, twigs, and wood is important to the health of the animal. If these teeth were not constantly worn down by gnawing, they could grow to a point where it would become so painful to eat, the animal could starve. While many rodents are despised, these little desert creatures, with their elongated ears and tufted tails, have managed to win the hearts of children and adults the world over. There's nothing quite like a baby bunny to put a smile on your face. Until next time, I'm Miguel Caldera. Get out and enjoy your hunt for nature. If asked about taking in a supposed orphan bunny, my advice would be this, unless wounded, leave it in the wild. They are best equipped to survive outdoors, and it would be traumatizing to take one in, only to have it die a few days later. An ancient proverb states, There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is death.